Have you ever wondered what the different modes on the amp dyno are all about? Well, this guy left a question here and I think it bears going back over. So let's talk about it a little bit. Now onto the part most of you want to see. That's right, amplifier dyno test. But before we get started with the amp dyno test, I felt it might be important to spend a little bit of time explaining what's the difference between the different modes, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Well, let's find out. Here I'll play back the 40 hertz track used for certified and uncertified. You will need either high quality headphones or a subwoofer to hear the 40 hertz track here. First up we'll look at the certified mode. This is more of a lab measurement mode that goes to 1% total harmonic distortion. Now this is not something you're going to be able to hear with a 40 hertz track on subwoofers. And we'll show you what the clean signal looks like with an oscope. You would need a THD meter to be able to measure the 1% THD. On the other hand, uncertified measures up to clipping. This is something that you would be able to hear with the standard human ear, especially with subwoofers. And you guys, I know have heard it before. It's that sound just, it sounds, we call it distorted, but that's clipping. You can see the squared off waveform here demonstrating what clipping looks like on an oscope. And now we'll listen to the dynamic track at 40 hertz. This is going to simulate low bass tones going to the amplifier and how it measures it dynamically. All right, so now you have the story behind the different modes on the amp dyno. Let's check out the measurements. I didn't talk a lot there about the different frequencies, but the amp dyno can use 1 kilohertz or 40 hertz for the certified test. Uncertified, you can use pretty much any frequency. Dynamic test has to use either 40 hertz or one kilohertz. Now, you guys have seen tests before like this where you get crazy power output, like 23,000 watts, get over 12,000 watts in this test, but it made me think about something. You know, what does this really mean? Like for you hearing the sound, what's the difference in these numbers that we keep seeing? So I found this article from Sound and Vision saying, how much power do you really need back from 2016? Well, this is what they say. In real world terms, a 3 dB loudness increment is quite small. In fact, it's the smallest change in loudness most untrained listeners will call noticeable. Hmm. So let's take the wattage and convert it into decibel wattage or dBW to find out what's the difference in some of these power measurements we're seeing. So in this case, Let's take 2,000 watts and convert it to decibel watts. That's 33. So the important thing to note here is not really the 33 number, but the difference when we add more power. So in the next case, we're going to add 500 more watts and change it from 2,000 to 2,500. So say you go from a 2K amp to a 2.5K amp. What's your difference in decibel wattage? 33.97 according to this. Now, according to what we read before, that's less than 1 dB, so you're not going to hear the difference between 2,000 watts and 2,500 watts. I think it's interesting to show the numbers and compare with what the manufacturers rate the models at. That way, we can kind of get an idea of how accurate they are with all the other specs. But in real-world scenarios, these close numbers we're seeing in power output, you're never going to hear the difference to your speakers. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Big D, I'm out. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm.